from New Leaf Designs. And welcome to this video on the third lace pattern of our Cozy Moments shawl. I've just finished the second lace pattern, which is the zigzaggy pattern here. Looks almost like a starburst pattern. It's really cool. So um, I've knit up until row 55, so that includes the increase row with all of the eyelets and then some knit and purl rows which results in this purl ridge right here. Now the third lace pattern is a bit of a beast. I'm not gonna lie, it's probably the most difficult chart in this pattern. If you can do this one, you can do anything. So, um, now unfortunately on the Turkish Delight sample, there is just a color change in the chart, so you can't really see it. So I'm just gonna grab a sample that I did in Stonewashed to really show you what the lace pattern looks like. Now here I have my original swatch for this uh, lace chart in Stonewashed, and you can really see it. So this is two lace repeats, so this is one, and if you have a little bit of imagination, you can see kind of a flower. So there is the flower bud right there, and then the, uh, how do you call this, the stalk of the flower, and then two leaves here, and then it is beautifully encapsulated in this kind of, I don't know what you want to call it, um, and then some triangular patterns. And here another flower bulb pattern just um, yeah it's just so so pretty so yeah it's quite a large chart because it's 24 rows and it's repeated over was it 12 yes 12 stitches so it's quite a long chart as well um, so I'm going to take you through this chart row by row I'm not showing you the wrong side rows because that is just pearl. I'm just showing you the right side rows. And um, to make it extra easy on yourself, you can take some stitch markers and put a stitch marker in between each repeat. That is just an extra tip. Then you know, okay, lace pattern and here now I have to start reading from the right side of the chart again. Another thing you can do if you have a print print out version of your chart. So if you have the PDF version it's really an easy to print that out. Just have it in front of you. Take some washi tape like this. Just some bright colored washi tape uh, or at least without any patterns on it and take <laughs> I can't peel it off now take some washi tape and stick it underneath the row that you are doing and then when you go to a next row just take the washi tape off because it's you know it's really easy to remove and reuse and place it under that next round uh, row um, because it's really easy to just you know you look at your knitting you look at your chart you look at your knitting again and then when you look at your chart you might look at a different line and then you might you know knit some different instructions so those are some of the things to look out for when knitting from charts so that's just a couple of tips from me to you and now we will start with row one of the chart which is row 56 I think yes that is row 56 of your pattern and in the pattern you can see that I put in a special note for row 7 but we'll get to that when we get to row 7 I'll explain it some more so get your shawl project ready I've put in a lifeline here and I strongly urge you to do the same because this is going to be the most difficult chart so if you make a mistake you don't want to rip 
back to your first lifeline. So just put in an extra lifeline here. If you don't know how to do that, I have another video on that. I will link it down below. All right, so we're starting with row one of the pattern. I've knit my four stitches here at the edge and I am slipping my stitch marker. Now I'm, I'm going to be very careful not to knit into my lifeline. And looking at the chart, so we start from the bottom right. The first stitch is just a knit stitch. So we're going to knit one, then yarn over. The yarn over is just doing the yarn over, not yarn over and knitting. So doing the yarn over. Then we have three white boxes, so knit three. Then we have a knit two together. Then a knit one. Then a slip, slip, knit. So slip, slip, and knit those two stitches together. Then another knit three. One, two, three. And a yarn over, and that's the end of our chart repeat. So I'm gonna make it easy on myself, put a stitch marker here before I continue with my chart. So I'm just gonna knit that one stitch before switching to throwing style to just also show you this method. So knit one, yarn over, knit three, Feel free to tug on your lifeline so that it kind of disappears in your stitches. So you're less likely to knit into it. So we have a knit two together. So I'm inserting my needles like so and knitting them as one stitch. Then knit one, then slip slip and knit, knit three. Oh, well, my lifeline is a little bit tangled here. I'm just gonna flip that to the other side like that. Okay, how many knit stitches did I do? So there is my slip slip knit. If you have any trouble locating where you are, I find it easy to count from a yarn over because you can always see a yarn over because it's slanted. So this is the first yarn over of our chart. Then we have the knit three, one, two, three. Then we have the knit two together, knit one, slip, slip, knit. That's our first knit stitch of those three. So I still need to do two. So that's a really handy skill if you want to be able to locate where you are. And then we do another yarn over. I'm placing a stitch marker and knitting that stitch. So you, you don't need to place stitch markers, but I really find it helpful with large lace charts so you can really see where you are at. So I'm going to be working my way across this row. So you, again, you will be finishing with a yarn over. So just do as I've done here, just yarn over. And then when you come to the end of your row, you just want to slip that marker without letting your yarn over drop and then knitting those four stitches. Then row two of this chart, it's not mentioned in the chart, as you can see, the um, even rows are missing. So those are all pearl rows, except for those edge stitches. Those are always knit. 
So go on and finish your first row of the chart, then meet me back for row three. So on to row three. Now row three is pretty similar to row one, just a different placement of your stitches. So we're knitting four, slipping the marker. And then instead of knitting one, we are knitting two, like that. Then doing the yarn over, knitting two, knitting two stitches together, knitting one, so this part is the same as row one, then knitting, slip, slip, knit, knitting two, doing a yarn over and knitting one and I'm at my marker this is the end of my first repeat so I'm slipping that marker and switching to throwing style to also show you guys this method so I'm knitting two doing a yarn over knitting two Then knitting two together, knitting one, slip, slip, and knit. Oops, there. Knitting two, doing a yarn over, and knitting that last stitch that's the end of my second repeat so this third row is not much new it's just different placement of the stitches so i'm sure you can handle this so i'm going to finish this row and then come back to you on row five which is a little bit different okay i'm ready for row five so we're knitting those four stitches, slipping the marker, and then when we look at our chart, uh, we knit one stitch, then we knit two together, and make a yarn over. Then we knit one, knit two together. yarn over, knit one, yarn over, slip, slip, knit, knit one, yarn over, and slip, slip, knit. That is one repeat of the chart. Now for a throwing style, I'm slipping my marker, knitting one, knit two together, yarn over, knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, Slip, slip, knit. And then knit one, yarn over, and another slip, slip, knit. And that is the repeat of this chart. Now you can't see that much just yet but um, the pattern will become visible as we progress. So you can finish this row, finish row six, and then I'll come meet you back at the start of row seven, which is a special row. All right, so we're at row seven, 
and I'm going to quickly explain something of, uh, about row 7. So I'll just pull up the chart right here and you'll see that there are two pink stitches. One is at the very right side and one is at the left side. At the right side you'll see the kind of like bird's foot uh, which is the slip one, k two together, knit two together and pass a slip stitch over. Uh, and on the left hand side of your chart there is the yarn over which is also marked pink now. Um, this is because you will need to knit different stitches for the very first repeat and for the very, very last repeat. And that is because the, um, the first stitch, the slip one, knit two together, pass slip stitch over, does not work at the edge of your shawl. So at the right side of your shawl, we are not going to do the slip one, K2, K2 talk, K2 together, pass the slip stitch over, but we're going to do a regular knit two together. Then you're going to knit the chart as normal. So for that first repeat, you are going to knit the yarn over. And for the um, following repeats, you are going to do the slip one, knit two together, pass slip stitch over and the yarn over. Then when you get to the very last repeat, on the left hand side of your shawl, you are going to do the slip one, knit two together, pass slip stitch over, um, but you're not going to do the very last yarn over. That is just going to be knit one. Uh, that is just to make it work for the edges of your shawl. So. Let's get knitting. So as I said, we're going to do a knit two together at the beginning of our row seven. Now we are going to follow the chart. So we're going to do a yarn over, knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit three, yarn over, Slip, slip, knit, knit one, and then yarn over. And then you'll see that we haven't come to our marker yet. That is because the following stitch will use up all three stitches. So I'm just going to slip that stitch off and put that marker on my right hand needle. And now we can do the first stitch of the main repeat, and that is slip one, knit two together, like that, and pass the slip stitch over. We will have done this in our previous chart as well, right there. So I'm going to do that one more time, throwing style. So we've just done the first stitch, I'm going to do a yarn over, knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit three, yarn over, slip slip knit, knit one, yarn over, and then I'm just going to take that stitch, drop the stitch marker, put that stitch back, put the stitch marker on here, and then we're going to do that stitch. Slip one, knit two together, and pass that slip stitch over like that. You can already see part of the chart forming now. So I'm just gonna knit until the end of this row and then I'm gonna show you the very last couple of stitches. 
Now for the very last repeat, I've already made sure my marker is in the correct place. Oh wait, I still need to do the yarn over. There, slip that back. Then I'm gonna do the slip one, knit two together, pass, slip stitch over, there. Yarn over, knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit three, yarn over, slip, slip, knit. And now you'll see that we already have two stitches left. So we are going to just knit those two stitches. So we knit one stitch according to pattern, then for the very last stitch where we have a yarn over symbol in our chart, we're just going to knit that one stitch and then finish our row. And now you can turn your work again, purl all of the stitches on the back side, and then we are going to do row nine. Okay, now the most difficult part is out of the way so we can start with row nine so we start with knit two then knit two together oops don't want to split that stitch knit two together yarn over knit two together yarn over Knit one, then it's going to be mirrored, so we're going to be yarn over, slip, slip, knit, yarn over, slip, slip, knit, and knit one. And that's our repeat, and you can see a lovely little pattern appearing there. Those are the petals for the flower that will be appearing right here. So I'm going to knit that again in throwing style. So knit two, knit two together, yarn over, Knit two together, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, slip, slip, knit, yarn over, slip, slip, knit, and knit one. And that is our repeat. So, so, so it's much easier than the last row. And also row 11 is going to be really similar. But I'm still going to show you. So go ahead and complete this row. And then meet me back for row 11. Hi everyone, just a quick note before I continue to row 11. I will be filming this chart from now on on my whirl version. Uh, simply because I had to knit ahead on my whirly gig version, so I've already completed that chart. So this is what it looks like. And we are, where are we? I think about here. Yeah, just so you know, it will look a little bit different. Um, and I will zoom in a little bit more because uh, Whirl is a bit thinner. Um, so I hope that it will still be visible uh, enough. But since this is a bit darker, it will contrast more with my table. So I hope that it will be contrasting enough. But yes, let's continue with row 11. All right, so I'm going to be knitting on my Whirl version for this chart. 
knitting those four stitches, slipping the marker, and then we take a look at the chart for row 11. And it's very similar to row 9. There are the same stitches, just spaced apart a little bit more. I am going to knit one. And then I'm going to knit two together. Yarn over. And then directly into that next knit two together. Yarn over, knit three instead of knit one at the center of row nine. So knit three, yarn over, slip, slip, knit, yarn over, slip, slip, knit. And that's the end of the chart repeat. So I'm gonna knit that one more time, throwing style. So we knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, yarn over, and knit three. Yarn over, slip, slip, knit, and again, yarn over, slip, slip, knit. I'm just going to knit that first stitch so my stitch marker doesn't slide off. So this is our repeat for row 11. So go ahead and finish row 11, then meet me back for the start of row 13. Row 13 is a really easy row in this chart, actually. Um, and it's also very similar to row 15. So you have two really nice, easy rows ahead of you. So first up, we're just going to knit one. Then we're going to slip, slip, knit, knit three, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, knit three, one, two, three, and then knit two together and that's it so it's super easy so in throwing style knit one slip slip knit knit three one two three yarn over knit one yarn over, knit three, and knit two together. And I'm just gonna knit one to secure that stitch marker. And that is our repeat of row 13. So an easy breezy row and go ahead, knit this row, and meet me back at the start of row 15. We are at row 15, which, as I said, is pretty similar to row 13. And we are going to start in the same way by knitting one, and then slip, slip, knit then we are knitting two stitches yarn over knit three yarn over 
knit two and knit two together. So it's basically the same, only the yarn over stitches in the middle are a bit more spaced, spaced apart. Now in the throwing style, I am going to knit one, slip, slip, knit, knit two, yarn over, knit three, yarn over, knit two, and knit two together. And that is the repeat for row 15. Now row 17 is a little bit more difficult again. So go ahead, finish row 15 and the purl row 16, and then meet me back for row 17. Okay, we are at the start of row 17. So... Knitting those four stitches and moving on to the chart. So we are knitting one stitch, then yarn over, slip, slip, knit, knit one, yarn over, slip, slip, knit. Now we are at the center stitch of the chart again, knitting one, then knitting two together, yarn over, knit one, knit two together, and yarn over. That's the last stitch of our repeat. I'm just going to slip that marker and knit the first one, otherwise I will lose the yarn over. So showing you that again, throwing style. So I've already done the knit stitch. So now I'm doing my yarn over. Slip, slip, knit. Knit one. Yarn over. Slip, slip knit, knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit one, knit two together, and yarn over. And again, I'm just going to knit that next stitch to secure my yarn over and you can really well with a little bit of imagination you can see the flower emerging so we have the flower leaves right here the stem is the center stitch uh, and now we are uh, doing the the bulb of the flower and in the next row we will do a center decrease to create the um, cap of that flower. So go ahead, finish your row 17, finish your row 18, and meet me back for the start of row 19. So row 19 features a double decrease again. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, we're going to knit two, yarn over, slip slip knit oops I only slipped one there and knit one 
yarn over and here comes the central double decrease slip one knit two together and pass slipped stitch over and there is the bulb of our flower and yarn over knit one knit two together yarn over and knit one there can you see that so pretty so once more in throwing style we're gonna knit one uh, knit two actually so knit two yarn over slip slip knit Knit one, yarn over, slip, knit two together, um, yes, knit, knit two together, and then pass that slip stitch over, then yarn over, knit one, knit two together, and yarn over knit one that is our repeat so i think this is a really fun row because you see the flower developing in the lace so go ahead finish row 19 then meet me back for row 21. okay so we're almost at the end of the chart we're at row 21 so just two more pattern rows to go and the first stitch is a knit stitch then a yarn over and slip slip knit again yarn over slip slip knit then three knit stitches Knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, and another yarn over. Slip your marker, and I'm gonna knit one just to anchor that yarn over. See, so the pattern is almost finished. Now, I'm gonna show you once again in throwing style so we already knit one then i'm gonna yarn over slip slip knit again yarn over slip slip knit knit three knit two together yarn over knit two together and another yarn over and that is your chart repeat there you go so go ahead and complete this row and meet me back for the final chart row which is 23 row 23 so we're at the very last patterned row of lace section three so to start we knit two yarn over knit yarn over slip slip knit Again, yarn over, slip, slip, knit, and then we knit that central stitch. You should see it going all the way down your chart. And then we knit two together, 
yarn over, knit two together, yarn over, and knit one. And I'm going to slip that marker that's between our charts. Um, technically, you could remove them at this point, but I would advise you to keep them on because you might want to recount some of your stitches later in the row. So I'm just going to remove them on the next row. So I'm showing you again in throwing style. Knit two. Yarn over, slip, slip, knit, yarn over, slip, slip, knit, knit that central stitch, knit two together, yarn over, knit two together, and then yarn over, knit one. And that is the end of our row 23 and also the end of our lace chart. So you, we only have one row to go, which is the pearl row on the wrong side. And then we're ready to move on to the next lace pattern. So that was our lace section three. My whirl version now fits barely on my needles. Well, it still fits on my needles, but I can barely spread it out. So here, can you see it there? Yeah, I think you can. That's our lace section three. It looks a little bit like a flower. I really, really like this actually. So once you've gotten through this lace section, this is the most difficult lace section of them all. So it's um, easy lace knitting from here. Uh, I say it's the easiest, or <laughs> I say it's the most difficult lace pattern. The next section that's coming up is not a lace pattern. It's a cable section, actually, that will also have some challenges, but I'll show you that in the next video. But yeah, this is just, it is one of my most favorite patterns. Um, and I really hope you enjoyed it as well. And if you have any more questions, please just ask below in the comment thread or on the Escapius Facebook groups. And I really hope you enjoy it. I hope to see you next time. And be sure to share your pictures with Cozy Moments Shawl and Val Mal. And on Instagram, you can tag me. I am at newleafdesigns.nl and you can also tag Escapius. And I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.